Today, I want to talk to you guys about my two worst experiences with cops. These experiences were so frustrating in the moment. The one ticket that I received from one of these stories got thrown out, so I'm thankful for that. And apologies, I know I look like a ghost that's been spooked, like super washed out. I didn't realize how washed out this makes me look. Um, I love this lipstick though, it's Clout from Jeffree Star. Anyway, so let's get started with the first story time, which is from my hometown a few years ago. So a few years ago, I was driving around in my hometown with my mom and my little Kia Soul. We had gone out to run some errands or to do some shopping, I can't really remember which. But we came upon this intersection in our town that pretty much everyone hates because the police officers really take advantage of that spot. There is a no right on red coming one way or coming always, I guess. And there's also a no blocking the intersection sign. So at the time, the light was green and I was trying to turn left onto a main street that we have to go down to to get to pretty much anything in my hometown. And I had pulled up just a little bit and someone behind me had also pulled up behind me so I couldn't back up and the light was still green and it started turning yellow so I decided to start turning. So I get into the lane almost all the way but then I get stopped with like literally my back tire in the intersection by maybe just a little bit. I wasn't really blocking anyone who needed to go straight. The reason that I couldn't continue in the lane was because someone who was coming from the other direction was trying to turn right, but they had scooted so far into the lane that they had basically already made the turn and they were in my way. So literally a cop comes around that person who had made a right turn on red when they had no light to do that. It wasn't their turn to go, it was my turn to go. He went around that person to give me a ticket for having my back wheel in the intersection for two seconds. He said, by the time I saw you, it was red and your tires were in the intersection or you were in the intersection. I definitely was not blocking the intersection. The people who could go forward could go forward. And the person who was making the ride on red had already pretty much made the ride on red. Like I said, he went past them to give me a ticket. I didn't immediately say anything to him because I was shy. I'd never been really stopped by a cop before and I asked my mom, I was sitting with my mom talking about how ridiculous it was because I literally had to come down during the week to come to this court date. And I was telling her how ridiculous it was and she was like, well, why didn't you ask him all that stuff when he gave you the ticket? And so I decided to call him. I called the station and I said, I have a question for an officer who just gave me a ticket and they patched me through to his car. And they said, and he says, I'm sorry, if you have an issue with why I gave you the ticket, then you have to come to court and fight the issue. <sighs> so I'm sitting here so frustrated. I think at this point I was still working at the newspaper, so I was not making a lot of money at all. And I was gonna have to take one of very few days off that I got to go down and be in court for this guy. My mom said I could pay a lawyer a decent price in our small town and that they would go to the court for me and represent me and try and figure out everything. So I ended up doing that. It was still expensive for that time for me because it was still like 60 bucks out of my pocket. But I paid the lawyer and then I didn't hear back for a while and my court date approached and like the next day I had emailed my lawyer and I said, hey, so how did the court date thing go? And they said, actually the whole thing got thrown out. <sighs> I'm hoping, I don't know all of the details, but I'm hoping that they looked at his camera, his dash cam. He literally avoided someone committing a traffic violation to come over to me who had like my back wheel in the intersection for two seconds. A lot of the cops don't really have a lot to do. It's not a super high crime area or anything. So like literally if they see one little thing off, they're gonna come after you, which I'm glad that they do that in most cases, but I have been at that intersection where people have straight up blocked it. Like five people have just been sitting in the middle of the intersection and they don't do anything about that. I'm sorry if you are on my TikTok, but the second story I've already kind of shared on TikTok and I still don't understand it to this day but 
I, this also happened very recently. This happened in the last year. So I shop for our groceries at Walmart and I do the grocery online shopping. So basically I shop for everything online and then I go pick it up. This helps me particularly with not overspending when I go into Walmart because a lot of the times I'll go into Walmart to get groceries and I'll come out with a cookie sheet that I didn't really need. So I do that to kind of keep myself from impulse buying. I don't know who all watches my channel or if they know anything about Walmart or the Walmart pickup area or anything like that but basically on one side of the Walmart buildings there's a side that's painted orange and you go there to pick up your groceries and it depends on where you're at I go to a regular sized Walmart there are also the neighborhood Walmarts that are smaller and probably less there's probably less incidents that happen there I was pulling in there and this lady was pulling out and she was backing out in her van. She started to slow down and I was assuming that she had seen me because she started slowing down. So I started to go again and she started to back up more and she hit me. Not hard, you know, like, and I didn't blame her or anything like that, but she, she ran into me a little bit. The car that I was driving is technically Jonathan's car. It's not my car. When she hit the side of my car, I got out of the car and I said, hey, like, I think I'm just gonna call in to report the incident and maybe have someone come out here to do a report just in case something's wrong with the car because I really don't want something to be wrong and me not know it. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I totally understand. She was so nice, we talked. Um, she was a teacher, she had her kids in the car after school, and it took forever for the cop to get there, which, you know, like, what can you do about that? You really can't do much about that. Almost immediately when the cop came on the scene, he just seemed really frustrated that we called him out there. And I had made it really clear to, um, to the non-emergency line that we had had, like, just a small incident and that we just needed a report done. Like, literally, it was so simple. Um, but he seemed like so frustrated that we called him out there like he didn't want to do his job <laughs> and So he was like, okay, so what happened? And so she said I was backing out and she was coming in and I didn't see her and I ran into her and He said, okay, so what's your version of events that happened? So I told him I was like I Would agree with what she said pretty much exactly what she said I was coming in she was coming out and she tapped me on the side and I just wanted to get a report done in case something happens to the car later Actually, I said in case something happens and he was like, what do you mean in case something happens? And I was like, well in case there's unseen damages on the car like cars have a lot of components I don't really know what all is in a car. I'm not a car expert But I know that cars can have hidden issues after getting hit and I don't want to You know foot that bill on my own if it's not my fault that she hit me I didn't explain all of that, but he kept questioning me. He was like, are you sure you want to fill out a report? Are you sure you want to fill out a report? Like, I swear, he asked me like five times before he went to his car to fill out a report if I wanted him to, full, to fill out a report for me. He asked me that so many times and I just said, yes, 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 I want to fill out a report. He never, he never told me there was a reason for him asking me that, but the way that he came up to the scene made me think that he was just questioning it because he didn't want to sit there and take the time to fill out the report. He goes to his car and he is gone for so long. Like he, he kept making it out like it was so simple and it was kind of like just his mannerisms made me feel like he thought that it was a waste of his time to be there. And so I'm like, if it's such an easy thing to do and such a menial thing to do, why is it taking 45 minutes to fill out a report? So he's in his car, he fills out this report. And I swear, I'm standing on the side of the side of the thing, you know, people are coming out, making sure we're okay. And we're like, yeah, like both of us, we were totally cool with each other. Um, we were talking to each other that whole time. We were on our phones. And he comes out of his car, up to me and to the other lady with printouts. And he says, there was a reason why I kept asking you if you wanted to fill out a report. And I said, well, what's the reason? And he said, well, because most likely they're not gonna give you any money to fix your car if it's messed up because it's also your fault. And so I thought back in my brain to driver's ed in North Carolina. And I never once remember them saying that someone, I, I always remember being taught that the backing vehicle yields to the vehicles that are moving. I've always been taught that, I've always practiced that. 
it's always been the case. Like if, if a fender bender or something had happened with someone I knew or something like that, it was always the fault of the backing driver because it's your responsibility to make sure that your path is clear when you're backing up. I will check this law really, really quick and um, put an update on the screen right now. But anyway, he sits, he sat in his car for 45 minutes and I have no idea why he couldn't have just said that to me in the first place. Why he couldn't have just said, okay, well, if I fill out the report the way that you're telling me, then you're both going to be at fault. I probably would have said, okay, let's just save our time. You know, it's fine. As far as I can tell, the car's fine. It's old. You know, I think it'll be all right. I just wanted to cover my bases, but... If he's saying that like nothing could be done anyways, there's no point in either of us sitting here. I would have told that to that lady. That lady was really nice. She was very cooperative and she totally owned up to the fact that she hit my car and she was not abrasive whatsoever. And I definitely would have told her if he would have told me that it was not worth our time, I would have told her it's fine. Let's just both go home and not worry about it. And so I was really frustrated and I was just like, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I grabbed the paper and I come home. And so I guess those are the cop stories that I have that were bad experiences. It'd be interesting if you tell me if you have had any bad cop experiences in your life and leave them in the comments or tell me on social media. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm sorry that the two videos this week were talking head videos. But I promise that we're going to have some exciting content coming to you in 2020. I'm sorry I'm tripping over my words. I'm tired. I love you all and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.